had a request for a blue jay. So, um, first of all, I want you to do, you got your background done, we did that in another video. And the blue jay, uh, you, can, you can trace it off of a photo that you get free online. Or you can freehand your blue jay, but make sure you put it on paper first. Don't try to do it on your canvas because you'll just be really difficult. And then all you have to do then is tape it on your canvas. Put your carbon paper on there, underneath there, and trace it over. But first of all, what I want to do is I got my background done, but I want to sit them on a log. And whether it's a he or she, I don't know, because apparently blue jays, males and females, um, they look alike. It's, you can't tell them apart. The only way you can tell them apart is their nesting habits. So, um, first of all, I'm going to try to put the log here so the blue jay can sit on it. So what I'm going to do is make it very simple. I'm going to take, I only have my primary colors and a bit of black and white. So, you can use ultramarine blue, cad red, cad yellow, and black and white. So I'm going to try a little, some black on one side of my brush and white on the other side of my brush. And let's see how that works out. So with the black side down, I'm just going to touch. I drew it out first so I'd know where it was going to go. So I'm just going to touch and pull. Touch and pull. And I haven't got enough paint on, so I'll get lots more paint. And touch and pull. And touch and pull. And that will give you... Now I'm using a hard bristle brush. It's pretty well worn out. And that will give you all those nice separations of color. And you don't have to work real hard at it. Just a simple way to do a little log. We can always adjust a few things after. So that's just a little log that the Blue Jay is going to sit on. Like I said, we'll just... Anything we need to adjust after. As long as you get your little log there first. So... If you mess it up and you need to go over it again, just double load your brush again with black and white. Black on one side and white on the other. Black side down. Touch and pull. Touch and pull. Touch and pull. And like I say, you can adjust all this after. So we'll just do that now to get that done. And when that dries, then we can put our blue jay on. So now that you got the log there for the blue jay, let's transfer our blue jay to our canvas using our carbon paper. Okay, make sure you can see this. So you just put the carbon paper underneath and you make your transfer just by tra transferring the lines to the canvas. So just grab a pen and go over your lines and if you make a few mistakes or you make it go outside lines or crooked or miss lines or whatever don't worry about it because we cover up these lines and you can always adjust them so don't worry too much let's just go over our beak there we go and we're going down over the chest Good. So keep doing that until you get your whole blue jay done. Now lift it up to make sure it's all coming out on your canvas. There we go. Make sure you didn't miss any lines. And just keep going until you get everything in that you need to use in order to paint. So that goes for anything that's an object like a house or you can do lots of things freehand but sometimes it's a little complicated and you can't get the perspective right or you can't get the shape right so this kind of speeds up the process because you want to paint you're not really if you're drawing then you can measure and use the grid method whatever it takes to get your drawing done but right now we're just doing a painting so we just want to get as much on there as we can make sure you didn't miss any lines and then if you're happy with your drawing, and it's on there okay, you can take this off. 
All right, so now it's off. You can't go back because you won't be able to line it up. So once you take it off, it's off. So make sure that you're happy with the way it's drawn before you take it off. Okay? Now, first of all, I th I'd like to start with the beak and the eye. So why don't we start with the beak. and the eye. So let's just take a bit of dark paint. We can make some almost black paint by using blue, red, and yellow. And that'll give you a really dark look. It's almost as black as the black. So if you don't want to use black, you don't have to. You can just use the red. Use the primary colors to get the really dark color. So let's just do the beak first. Just put in your beak. Good. Paint that in with a small brush, small round or flat brush. If you got a flat brush, make sure it's chiseled edged. I'm just using a little round brush there now to get at the beak. And it might start off funny and look weird and everything, but you got these ugly stages and you got, and then you finish it up and it, you have a nice stage. So that's the beak, same colors. Let's put it on the eye. Let's just put in the eye. And you can leave a center, you don't have to. Let's not bother with the center right now. We'll put that in after the highlight, I should say. Okay, so we'll just, we have the eye done. Good. That's that much. Fix any adjustments that you need to fix. And let's see. Good. Now you want some. Let's see. I'm going to get a flat brush, chiseled edge. As you can see, it's chiseled edge. It's really skinny on the top, like, you know, like sharp. And what you can do is get some blue paint and a little bit of red. and a white to brighten it up a little bit and then we'll do the head all right so we'll put some blue on the head part and what we'll do is we'll go with a lighter color make it easy I don't want to make it too complicated just put a little more white there and brighten it up a little bit in the front. Now wet on wet. Why do we use wet on wet? Do you know? So we can blend the color. See how nicely that blended right there? Good. So we're working on the head. So I'm going to see if I can get a little closer for you. Let's just work on one piece at a time. I find it much easier when you just take one piece at a time and it helps it helps you just concentrate on one piece at a time rather than a whole subject. So we have some blue and white here. It's a bit more white around the eye, so I'm just using the chiseled edge brush. Little white here. That's all. And then we have clean your brush off, get most of the blue off, just wipe it off in your tissue, and get just white for now. And we'll go down to actually. Let's let's go with the blue for an underpainting. Let's just go with a light blue for an underpainting for here for the, for the feathers. Good. Whites and blues. This is for the underpainting because that will make your white stand out more. And underneath there, a little bit underneath the beak, and a little bit up here. I'm going to punch this in. Push, 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 push. A little bit here and just fill it in with your white. There we go.
go. Good. Now, we're going to keep your brush dirty, it's okay, and use a bit of that blue paint. Add a little bit more blue to, your, to that blue paint. Darken it up. And put a little bit on the beak here. Yeah, there we go. Leave a bit of the black there is okay. For the shape. And put a little bit of blue in here just for shadows. You don't have to do this, but I'm just gonna do that for now. For now, like I say, we're gonna make sure that we get rid of those lines too. So just make sure you, you go over those lines so that they can't see them anymore. There we go. Good. A little bit of feather going out here. So you may have to go over things a couple of times just to uh, get it the way you want it. So working on the head, just follow along. Make it easier on yourself. Just put some blue and some white on there. Now underneath, right here, there's some black. So we'll go back with that dark color of blue, red, and yellow. And that will give us our nice dark color. Almost Now my brush is dirty, so it's a bit light. So I'm going to add a bit of black. Okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to clean my brush. Now that will show you that if you don't clean your brush properly or change brushes, you can't get the color you're looking for because it's... Just other colors on your brush. That's a good lesson. I don't mind making mistakes. I like showing you mistakes. All right, here we go. Blue. Are you there? Are you there? There you are. And red. Red. And a bit, bit of yellow. Get that nice dark color. There it is. Okay, so take that those colors and put it underneath here. See how it's not pure black? It gives a nice color. Gives it at least some color. Good. Just use a chiseled edge brush for now. So there's your dark color. Might have to go over it again because it's a little transparent there now. It's possible that my brush was a little dirty. We also have that little black, a little bit of black here by the eye. So use the same colors, the dark color, and put it in here. These are all just feathers. So we'll go over that again now to feather all that up. So you got that much done. And if you want to redo the eye again, just to, to thicken it up. There we go. Good. And we can straighten up down here. This little bird has something in its mouth, I think. I'm, I'm looking at one of the pictures. I got for free online, but uh, I'm just going to get you to concentrate on what I'm doing here now. Because if you look at, if you compare it right now, you might want to do something different. So you get your own picture and make sure that um, you get some of these techniques and you should be able to do your own. Good. Just take your flat chisel brush again and then add some pure white to it both sides, chisel it up, and then take the white over the blue that you did for the underpainting for the feathers, and just put on a few of these little feathers here just to get it started. Good, and a little bit out here. We'll use a liner brush now too because the chisel edge brush is good, but Try to get a little more of a feathery look. Let's see, just use the corner of your brush if you have to. Just pull out, pull out, pull out. 
that's it. Pull out all the white, all the underpainting that you did for the white feathers. Just go back over those with some white and you'll see that some of the underpainting still is there. Come down around the neck. Try to come uh, and use the same shape as the head. Because if you make your lines back and forth like this, it won't look right. Good, so we go over here. Some white, and there's tap on a little bit of white here. And then, just bring it up here like this. Softly. A little more on here, just to get the feather look. Just feather it on. <laughs> feather it on. There we go. Now, let's take the end of our brush, put a bit of white on it. You can use a toothpick also if you like, and just put a little dot in here for the eye. That brings it out a bit better. Good, and now darken up underneath there again with the red, yellow, and blue. Get your dark color again. Mix it up so that it looks nice and dark. And let's go over this again to darken it up. Good, so the head's probably going to be the hardest part. Go over your lines so that you don't see those black lines that we drew. This comes down around here, bends a little bit under here. Just push in a few little dark lines. Just a few little dark lines. Now, the next step, we're not finished with that yet, but we'll we'll just move on to some different places as we get it rolling along then we'll come back and adjust anything else that we need to do so on the back this big part here is just a blue color so just get your flat chiseled edge brush again flat chiseled edge brush and it's not a very big brush it's only small just a small chiseled edge brush because you don't want it too big you won't be able to work so take some blue and take some little bit of red and white. Brighten it up. There we go. It's almost a purplish look to it. And we'll just put that on the back. Just put that in there. Just fill it in. That's it. Fill it in. Go with the shape of it. I'm going across there just to get underneath that black there. But then come on down the shape of the back. So fill that in nicely. Get rid of those dark lines. And fill it in with your blue, purplish blue. There we go. More blue. So match it up. When you go back to get your color, sometimes you can't get the exact same color, but that's okay because it makes it more interesting when you got some different colors going on there. See, I'm not matching up all the time. Might add a little bit of white just to make it opaque, which means you can't see through it. Transparent paint is, is good for. Um, a glaze. I showed you some glazes in my other videos. How to glaze. You could glaze this one after if you want. You could put Mod Podge on it. I did a, a video on Mod Podge, how you can make your paintings beautiful and everything like that and protect them. Protect them. Okay, good. Now we can take a little bit of our dark color 
Let's take our dark color. You remember the, do you remember colors are put together to make it nice and dark? Good. So to make this a little feathery, let's just bring in a few of these dark lines into here. And if it won't work, get some water and away to go. Good. Whoops. I turned my head for a second and look what I did. <laughs> so let's clean that up. Just by getting some more blue to match it up a little bit. There we go. And some white. Give it more of a feathery look up here. Up here. A little bit of a feathery look. We don't need a big lap, but there we go. Now I have a bunch of br brushes there. This one is probably giving me a little bit of a hard time, so I'm going to try some different brushes. Let me try, let's see, a thicker, thicker brush, liner brush. Let's try that. Yeah, so get a package of them. They're not very expensive. You can buy them any any craft store, and there's probably about 10 of them in one package for a couple of dollars. So be worth getting. So just to do some touch-ups right here. Probably a little more blue to match it up a bit better. There we go. I'm trying to get the feathery look for you so that you can make it more natural looking. Good. And then you're going to bring, now you can eat, yep, yeah, you can bring some of that dark color into the white. Let's get your dark color and bring it in. Now we'll work on the back here, back feathers. Let's see what we can do with that. Let's get some white paint and some blue again and a little bit of red just to purple it up a little bit and we leave that dark and we got to wet this again because it's all dry now so we're just going to darken up some areas where there's some shadows I like that purplish look it's nice so you can add your own colors as long as within something like what the color of the bird is so you can add a little bit of purplish color into your blue jay because purples are always nice in a painting. I'm going to lighten this one up up here. There we go. And I'm just bringing it into the black a little bit. And then I'm going to add blue, more white to my blue color. Just get it to, uh, like we got a, a different values of blue. So I want to make sure that we get our dark, medium, and light. So it's a bit of a darker color. We have to wet it up a little bit because we need to, to work wet on wet with this. Good. Just keep pulling it up into the... Turning your brush. Turning your brush, you have it flat like this. The wide way, which is horizontal. And then you can flick it around to... Or to... Uh, vertical and then you can use that then to get some feathers. So in the wider spaces you can use so we keep this dark up here horizontal with the brush and then we can add a little white to up to that color to lighten it up and we can bring down some lighter color here. Now because it's wet on wet we can blend that together. Give it a nice see that will blend in with the, the blues nice. I did a video on how to blend your colors. And all kinds of videos I'm trying to help you as best I can and myself. <laughs> I'm still learning new things all the time. I'm having fun. I don't want to know everything all at once. I'd be pretty bored. It's more fun when you don't know everything. And it's hard to know everything because every painting is different. And then you can also learn color pencils and pastels, and all kinds of stuff, and different color mixing techniques and shapes. It's a never-ending learning process, so don't ever think, and don't even want to learn everything all at one time. Just have fun 
And every time you do a painting is something new. You learn something new every time. And then when you get certain techniques down, certain ba basic techniques, then you don't have to worry too much. Then you can learn new things on top of what you already know. So what you're going to do now is take a, your liner brush. Let's add a few little strokes of white to make that look a little bit feathery. There we go. A little bit feathery. Pull it up into your black just to get that little feather look on the go. Pull down, pull down, pull down. Good. Perfect. So we leave that as that for now and then we'll take our flat chisel brush again. Whenever I'm, We're using basically the same brushes so I don't have to explain to you every time I change a brush. I'm going to keep trying to use the same brushes over and over. So the same colors, your blue and white, that's your blue with a little tiny bit of red and white added to it. And then bring it over here on this side. Good. Oops. There we go. That comes right down on the chest. Chest, they usually call it the breast of the bird, right? <clears throat> the breast of the bird. It's right here. The blue jay. Blue jay is going to get mad at me. I keep calling him. He, he wants to be called a blue jay. That's what he is. And I don't know if you're a girl or a guy. Because like I said, they, they have nesting habits that make them uh, male and female. So let's just get this in here. Let's get our basic colors on first. That make it easier for you. Just some underpainting first is what we're doing now. And that comes down here to your drawing. Good. So now what we can do is this part, the feathers, we're going to paint that a dark underpainting with our blue and our little bit of red and our yellow to get that really nice dark underpainting. It's more on the blue side and red, just a small bit of yellow to get a nice dark color. Okay. Red and blue is the main color in this. So we're just getting an underpainting of almost black color here. Yep. And let's go more on the blue side than the purple. Just by adding a bit more blue. And there we go. So let's just fill that in. And then when you get that done, then we'll be able to put on some of the uh, some of the feathers. That right up into the blue a little bit. Give it that feathery look. There we go. Let's just do this part first. Like I said, one piece at a time. Good. If you've got side lines, that's okay. It's going to be a pain over that anyway. But let's just work on this one part here because it's a little bit, a little bit complicated, but not too bad. So I'm getting the darkest underpainting first, okay? We need our underpaintings. We have to have those in order to get everything else on top. Good. So you've finished that. So when you're happy with the underpainting, now we'll do something else. Now we'll try some of these wings. And just get your white and a bit of blue and a tiny bit of red. And we'll put on, first of all, we'll put on a light color to get these here like this. We'll get them just started like that. Won't necessarily mean they're going to be like it. I'm going to go over them and do some highlights and everything. So I'm just trying to think. Now maybe we could do one right here. 
Okay, so I can meet up a little bit there. You have to look at your picture to see which way the wings are going and the feathers, okay? So have a look at your picture and go by your picture. Because the way I'm doing it could be a little different than what you're doing. This is just a basic technique, so at least you'll have some idea that when you look at your own picture, you'll know how it was put on. So I can get that nice blue color there now. It'd be doing marvelous. So what I did was put on the blue first, and then I took... It's hard to get that really dark color that I want in between these wings. So I'm just going to use a bit of black and blue for now. And I'm just taking a little liner brush or a little tiny flat brush, whatever works for you. And dip it in some black and a bit of blue, maybe even a bit of red. I had to get the black darken it up because I found I wasn't getting the dark I wanted. So just make a little curvy line if you can, a little curvy line. You can draw this out first if you want to. Little curvy lines just to represent some wings and feathers. Space and look at your picture and have a look at the space spacings. Good. And now then you do some more of these. Do some more of these lines here so we can use them to put our feathers on. So let's do another one here, maybe another one here. All right, so do them bright enough so you can see them. There we go. Good. I want a blue, a little bit bluer than that. I'm just trying to brighten them a little bit for the camera, but I think they're still a little bit too light. There we go. <laughs> I need a camera person to help me. Okay, so let's see. Let's get that on there. Still a little bit too bright for my liking. All right, so now you just do the same thing. Get your dark color and put in some of these little black curvy lines. Just a little bit of a curve. Just so we can get it started. Like I say, when you look at your own picture, you'll be able to uh, judge how far away and where you want your feathers. It's just a quickest little easy technique that I can think of for you. And in between, we'll go with um, some white, a little bit of blue, down around the fur here. A little bit here and a little bit there. Just fill that in with white for now. You can also use a filbert brush. That will give you those round edges. Filbert brush. See, it's rounded at the top a little. You see that? Pretty close to the camera, so it's probably blurring on me. Okay, so just take that and try it. Put some white with a little bit of blue. Tiny bit of red. I always, whenever I say that, tiny bit of red. And that will give you a little bit of a better shape. There we go. Good. Good, good, good. Now we'll still use a flat, small, flat chiseled edge brush and we're going to put a bit of white over here to represent some more feathers. Turn your brush whatever way you need to. Okay, maybe we'll use a smaller brush to get in between there. So I'm just going to use my very smallest flat brush I can find. It's almost like a, it's almost like a, a liner brush, but it's a little wider and a little more flat. So just take that and a bit of white, a little bit of blue, white. Soon taught me to fill up under white here. I think it is now. 
Okay, so we'll fill up on the white and then we'll get started. So we'll fill this in with some blocks of white. Little blocks of white. In between here where there's some blue. Get a small flat brush. Get better results with a small flat brush. And highlight a little bit of these here so there'll be more than one color. It's probably some feathers there. And just a little bit of whiter color on the edge here. Get a bit of blue so it doesn't be too white. You don't want to be too white, just want to highlight a little bit. There we go. Make it, give it a rounder look. There we go. A little bit there, a little bit there, a little bit there. A little bit here. Good. So just clean up the edges here with some white paint. A little bit of a wing down here or feathers. Just clean that up, just add some white paint over it. Over it. So you, you may have, after you go through this video, you may want to skip over a few things that if you don't need to look at it, just you can skip over it and just move on and do your own thing. At least this will give you some tips on how to get the feathers on and things like that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put some little feathers in there. So the first thing I'm going to do is write my underpainting with my dark blue, red, and yellow. So we'll get a dark color in here to get us underpainting. Get it up here and in here. Get a little bit of a shape wherever you, you had lines in there that you can follow. That will help you. And need a bit of patience, oh, patience. But um, use your flat brush, smallest flat brush you can find. Some dark color on it there. And when you get that on, then you're just going to add, clean off your brush and add a bit of white. So that should still have a bit of paint on there. And just make these little, well, you know what? We'll use a smaller brush. That's a bit too big for these little feathers. So we'll just use a small liner brush like we were using. Small liner brush and add a bit of white. That should be still wet so you should be able to pick up. And just make these little touch, 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 touch. And that's it. Good. So just touch those on there. And then the next thing you need to do is this part down here. And we'll paint that. Same color is good. Just have an underpainting. I always want an underpainting. So we'll just do another underpainting. And then we'll put our feathers on there. I'm just using a very small flat brush. And while I'm waiting for that to dry a little bit, I don't want it to dry completely because I want to put white over it, but I want to pick up some shadow. If we don't, if it dries on you completely, put your white on and then put a bit of shadow over it. So what we'll do now is we'll take our small flat brush again, a small flat bristle, or a, sorry, a chiseled edge brush. And we will add, I know I'm probably blurry on you because I'm really doing a close up here. So let's take some of our blue paint to get it started for another underpainting. And when we get that done, that'll be that part. Okay, so go ahead and put that on. So, just take that tail, bottom tail, and put some blue paint on there. And just put it on. Put your dark blue on first. And then we'll just highlight a tiny bit. So put your blue one up here, underneath here. And 
do a little bit of highlighting by adding white to your dirty brush and adding just a little bit of a lighter color over here just to highlight it. You can do the highlights after if you like. We do them now. And up here we'll just get that on there. We'll highlight that again in a minute. Just trying to get some shadows. There we go. Now, what we'll do is we will separate some of those feathers uh, by getting the really dark color of red and blue. A little bit of black this time. I want to get it really dark. But re add the red and blue to it because that will keep it from getting too harsh. Alright, so let's separate some feathers. Get a little bit of a separation here. A little bit of a separation here and a little bit of a separation here. I pushed a little bit too hard on my brush that time. So come on down, down, and down, down to the bottom of the tail the feather. Okay, so we need some more paint. Go get it. I'm using a chiseled edge brush this time, but you can use a liner brush, whatever works for you. Okay, so we make that nice and round. Good. Just get it nice and dark so you can see the separation. Let's get that in there. Anyway, we got a little bit there. Good. Now take your chiseled edge brush. I'm sorry. Let's try another brush. Let's try a liner brush. Round liner brush. And let's take some of that dark color. Black and blue. Red. Good. And let's put on some feathers. So let's put on a little line here. And maybe one here and here, all the way down, all the way down, good, and then some more over here, and if you could bend them a little bit, make them look curved. some more under here. They don't have to line up. I know what you were thinking. Do they have to line up? No. When you look at your picture you'll see. It's, it's hard to do it out of your head. If you try to remember what a blue jay looked like just by having a look at it a couple of times then you're gonna not remember where all the feathers go and how far apart they go, what colors are in the blue jay, more than just blue there. Okay, now, now let's just highlight that tail and we're almost finished now. I'm not going to do a lot more with it. I'm, I'm going to let you try that yourself. Look at your own picture and then you decide where you need more colors and things. So let's just go with a small flat brush. Let's see, let's see. A small flat brush. Very small, very flat. It's almost round. It's so, so small. But uh, take some of your white paint and make sure your brush is clean. And then Take some of your white and a bit of blue, yes, and a little bit of red and white till it gets bright enough so you can do a nice highlight. So lots of white. Okay, now what you're going to do is put a little bit of highlight over here and over here and over here 
this comes so far down and over here I will smooth that out now in a minute we'll blend that good and a little bit under here good now let's take a clean brush so we can blend that out a little bit. I'm just wiping my brush off in my tissue. And I'm just going to blend it over here on the edge. Those edges there, just take them while they're wet and push at them. Push at them. And take, take them over further. So that they don't look like it's just little blobs of white. So that helps bring out the... Um, the highlights might need a little bit more highlight over here and here and then just blend it in when you get it on there just push at it and blend so it doesn't look like white blobs now you can do that several times All right and go over these highlights again All right I'm thinking we might need to darken this line up here make it a little tiny bit wider just so we can have separation of wings there wings hmm now I'm getting hungry now I get this down here and go down 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 as far as the picture shows you and then it fades out. And then I put a little bit of white down here just to, to bring it down into a separation. A little bit of white down here. And you don't have to do that. I'm just playing around now to see what works and what don't work. Just highlight that edge again there with a small flat brush and uh, a little bit of blue, a little bit of red, a little bit of white, lots of white, more white than blue and just bring that in there. Oh, brush is too big, got to have the right brush or it won't work. Okay, so I'm going to let you finish that off yourself and you can send your paintings. If you got any problems, email me or comment and ask me, you know, what else you should do or if there's anything else you can do or anything at all that you that I can think of to help you just put a few little highlights on the chest here probably bring them into the blue a little bit just for a feathery look there we go so if there's anything that looks funny or you need to fix just go ahead and have a look at your picture and, and put it in to me that's too wide apart but the, the picture I'm looking at has got something in the mouth and what else what else what else a bit of highlight down here and that will be it for now now you can put clouds or so you can make your background more lighter in some areas let's just pull these in here a little bit just to brighten them up a little bit just put it on and then we'll soften it up there we go I'm just going mostly white. You can add some blue to your white. And that will give you some little highlights. All right. I think I'm just going to finish that off there now for you. Because it's really not a lot. I could work at this a lot, right? I mean, you know, just lots of things that could be done here obviously but at least this is just a little start for you so you can at least know how did you do that or how did you how did you get those lines on there or how did you separate those feathers whatever you feel that you need if this helps at all then that's good that's it you just rub those in with a clean brush clean damp brush and then you can 
soften those up. Clean damp brush. And that will help you get those on better. Good. Now, I may work on this again and then I will show you what I did. But for now I'm going to leave this with you. And you go ahead and have some fun and get those on there. I think I got everything that it needs for now. So let's have a look at the whole stump looks fine. So it doesn't look too bad. You know, I don't think it looks too bad. So give it a shot. I did forget his little feet. Okay, well, let's do the feet. So let's just, for the feet, we'll just do a, one there because the other one's hidden behind that foot. And we'll just do a dark color, a red and dark blue, and a little bit of black if you want it. And just draw his or her foot so that talons, whatever you want to call them, and you put them so that he's hanging on there. One comes down over here here to hang on. One over here. And there's one behind there somewhere. So they got pretty big talons there. Uh, talons. Claws. Santa. Okay, and then just do a little bit of a highlight on top of that. Just so you can see it. So I just drew out some lines to get me started. And this one here. And another one coming off of this one. And here. Maybe there's some down here. And here. Now you can have as many as you want, okay? You don't have to have just a little few like that, but just for the video, I'm going to just do a couple for you. Good. So you can stagnate it. You can stop and go again. Skip over a piece. Good. You don't have to be a straight line. It's just going to be a couple little highlights on there. That will give the effect of some highlights for you. All right, that brings it out a little bit better. Now, with your liner brush again, the shorter one, the shorter one, let's put some cherries on there. Just get a bit of red paint. Find your cherries. Now, draw these out first, okay? But when I'm too far away, you can't see it. So if you missed a little bit on the top there, just go and put in these little red cherries on top also. Decide where you want them. Little round circles. That's it. Just put these little red circles on there. Good. You can make them big or small. Probably look at some reference photos and see how big they are. But it's your painting. You can have them as big as you want. So that gives it a little bit of interest to the painting. The, the red against the green looks really nice. And now, some leaves. I will lighten up those cherries in a second there now. So some leaves. You'll need some gray paint. So you take your green paint and you're going to take your same brush and put green on one side and let's see, yellow on the other side. And then you're going to touch in some nice green leaves. 
So green on one side, yellow on the other. That will make it much easier for you to get your leaves done faster too. Green on one side. And because the, uh, the background is green, you might only see some of the yellows. But you still have the illusion of leaves. here I'm just touching and my brush will make the shape for you there we go down here I'm just touching the green and the yellow will come off now you I drew out my leaves first so I get the shape okay green and yellow and touch and touch you don't have to draw your leaves, all you gotta do is touch and your your brush will do the work for you. Touch green and yellow and touch. You can have as many as you want. by touching yellow and green on there you'll get shapes of leaves. I'm just using a liner brush but you can try um, a filbert. Now let's put a little bit of, I'm going to use the same brush and I'm going to put a little white dot on all my cherries okay and that will give them the illusion of some light reflecting off of those. There we go. And that's so cute. Some white. Little dots. Dot. One dot on each one. that will focus for you. There we go. Good. Now if you want a shadow on those cherries, then you go into that purple color that we made, dark purple, and we will take the bottom of the cherry with that dark purple color and just make a little line around the bottom to give it a, a bit of a shadow there. And if it don't come off, we'll have to wait for it to dry and then put it on. But I like working wet on wet so that it'll blend nice. Come on, shadow. Come on, shadow. Come on. There we go. A little bit of shadow there. So you don't need a lot because they're only small cherries. But if you get the three values, dark, medium, and the highlight, It'll stand out more for you. Good. Now, these are just little things that you could do last minute on your painting. So that's, that's nice. A bit of shadows going on there. Let's see if that will focus for you. There we go. Now you can make it more elaborate if you want, but that's the way it will look. So anyway, I hope these few little things helped you. You can do more with your log. You can do whatever you want to add more things. Birds in the sky, I don't know, or in the background. But uh, anyway, you go and finish your, your blue jay and have fun painting. And happy painting from Alison Pryor. See you in the next video.